This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to be setting up our audio system for our um, simple game that we have, mostly to see how our player prefs kind of saving system works, but also because when you implement audio in your game, even if it's very rudimentary, it can really bring your game to life. And so it's useful to do, if even in a very simple way, early on in your prototyping if you can. Don't go overboard with it, but like I say, it can really kind of add just a little bit extra to your game that'll make it more, um, just more fun to work with. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to need some sort of music to play in our game. We're gonna be working on our background music first, and in order to do that, you need to find an audio clip. You can use really any music that you have. If you have um, an MP3, a particular song you really like, I recommend um, in Compatech.com, uh, Kevin McLeod has a bunch of royalty-free, absolutely free music you can use, and it's perfect for prototyping. It's not necessarily something you'd want to use in your final project because it'll be something that people may have heard before, but um, just to get your game started, it's a really great option. They have a total option for you. You can choose the feeling of your music, um, to go by tempo, length, all of that. So I would recommend downloading something from there. And then when you're ready, we're going to import it into our game. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to our assets here. I'm going to create a whole new audio folder because we're going to be doing a few things with audio. So it's probably helpful to have this all grouped into one space. So we'll create audio folder. I'm going to open up into this. And this is where I'm going to actually import my um, particular piece of music. And so if I go import new asset, I'm going to go to my downloads and let me find the one that I had. Tech Live. Okay. Might take a minute to load. So I've just uploaded, or so I've just installed my audio file. I did a quick skip because it takes a little bit to load sometimes, depending on the size of your audio file. But here we have it. Um, you don't need to worry about any of the settings of the import settings right now. We're just going to be using this, like I say, as kind of an example. So the thing we need in addition to an audio clip is some sort of audio player. So I'm going to go into our, whatever scene you're in, we can do this because we're actually going to be duplicating this object across all of our scenes. I'm going to right click and create an empty game object. I'm going to quickly reset its position. Um, it doesn't really matter, but I like to have kind of my meta game objects always at zero, zero, zero if I can. And I'm going to rename this to BGM player. You can certainly name it whatever you like. And in addition to the transform, I want to add to it an audio source component. And this is what actually will play the um, sound, in this case, our background music. In here, I'm going to add the audio clip to the uh, variable that's called audio clip. Uh, we're not going to worry about the audio mixer group right now, but we will be getting to that in a future video. I'm also going to turn off play on awake because we're going to be using kind of a singleton pattern and I don't want there to be any, if there's any sort of a slowdown, I don't want multiple um, players playing at once. And I am going to turn on loop so that if we get to the end of the song, it will just start over again for us. So with those in place, I'm going to quickly save the scene and I'm going to take this BGM player and I'm actually going to drag it into our assets so that we make it into a prefab for us. Because like I say, we're going to be putting this into all of our different scenes. In fact, what I'll do right now before we go forward is I'm going to add this to the other scenes. So I've got this in the settings menu right now. I'm also going to add it to the save menu. I'll save the scene, go back to audio, drag this in save that scene. We'll go to the uh, level select menu. Again, we'll want that in there. Save that. Our game level. Save that. And finally, our level end. We can save that. And it really doesn't matter where you end up because now, like I say, this is a prefab. Any changes we make will be able to apply across all of our scenes. 
So the last thing we need in here is we want some way for this object, particularly when we're in our menus, chances are we're gonna have like the same music across all of the menus. We don't want to have to stop and then start a whole new player each time we do that. That's why we're gonna make this a singleton, not for the purposes of being able to access it from anywhere, but so that it persistently lives across multiple scenes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create inside of our audio folder here, a C-sharp script. And I'm gonna call this persistent audio player. possibly overly descriptive, but that's fine. I'm gonna to go to our prefab here, and I'm gonna go down to add component, and I'm going to choose that new script that I've created, and we're gonna add that onto here. Now the nice thing is, because we've added it to the prefab, if we go to say our um, instance of it in the level end scene here, we see that it's already been added, and it's been added across all the scenes. You could also add it to the instance, you would then just have to click apply to apply that to all the other prefabs as well. With that in place, we can actually jump into MonoDevelop and we can start actually scripting this. So the first thing I want to do here is I do want to put up at the top a require component type of audio source because this is always going to work with an audio source component on the same object, so we want to make sure that that's always there. The next thing we need to do is set up a couple of variables. The first one is going to be our public, um, yeah, we'll keep it public for now. Static persistent audio player. And this is our instance variable, so this is what's gonna track, is this, is this instance of this object the one that's supposed to be existing across all of the scenes? And then we're also going to have our audio source component. I'm just gonna call that player. We're not gonna use a start method. In fact, we're not gonna use either of these methods right now, but I am gonna create a void awake method. And this is where we're gonna actually put in our singleton pattern. So the first thing we're gonna check is if ins equals null. So if there's if nothing has been set to that instance prop um, variable yet, then we know that this particular instance is going to become that persistent instance. So we're going to say, don't destroy on load. And we're going to so we're going to kind of flag this game object that it's going to exist from scene to scene. We're going to set the instance variable equal to this particular um, instance of persistent audio player. We're also going to get our audio source now. We're going to say player equals get component audio source which again, we know exists because we're requiring it to be on any object with this particular component. And finally, now we're going to tell this to play whatever is currently um, loaded up. So like I say, we're not saying play on awake in the um, component, in the audio source component, but we're sort of doing it here once we know that it is the singleton instance. Next, we're gonna say else if instance does not equal this, meaning that instance has already been assigned, but it's not this current instance, meaning you know we've probably brought one in from somewhere else and this was just the one that was already in our scene, then we need to destroy it. So we'll simply say destroy game object and that'll get out of the way for us so that we only ever have one of these in the scene. So with that all that in place, we've actually got our kind of persistent player that will exist for us now. We can do that, we can show this in effect by going back to Unity. And if we hit play, we'll hear, we hear the music start playing and we'll notice that the BGM player has been moved into the don't destroy on load area. So it's going to persist between scenes. In fact, we can go to our main menu and we can just switch between scenes. We'll always have that there playing and persistently playing music. There's no skipping, no jumping around. You'll also notice that any other background music players that were created get eliminated so that there's no conflict between them. With all these in place, what we can do in our next video is take our saved settings and apply them to our audio players so they play at the volumes that we want. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.